good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We are leaving Memphis today. We're going to make a stop in Camden, Tennessee. And today we are doing a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Roger Pearsall. I hope you enjoy today's vlog, Roger. Now let's hop in the car and start making our way to kind of a sad place. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And big thanks to this lion right outside my window for protecting me last night. Oh, and Roger, I hope that you're a Patsy Cline fan. I had a great time in Memphis, but I will be back before the end of this trip because I have a big surprise for you guys. I love these old buildings. And of course, all the art. Founder of St. Jude. St. Jude Hospital, come on. Got a little bit of rain, but I saw that this is called the Music Highway that we're on. I'm supposed to be going 60 right now. Like him. Can you see that? That gorilla has red eyes up there on the billboard. Whoa! Definitely have to pass by this again someday because this is Casey Jones Home and Railroad Museum in Casey Jones Village here in Jackson. All right, the sign says Camden, Paris, and Parsons. That's what we're looking for, Camden. We're going to the unfortunate crash site, death site of Patsy Cline and her band. Now the farm that the plane crashed onto is about three miles west of Camden. So that's, we just made the left turn out of Camden. We got a couple miles to go. What an eerie feeling. Said the conditions that night were terrible. It was foggy and misty and lightning and raining. It was kind of all over the place all night. And the first call came in at 7.30 from the man who owned the farm. 7.30 p.m., March 4th, 1963. You can see up there on the sign, Patsy Klein Memorial entrance. Oh, this is so sad. Especially to, to look down. I had found an interview, I mean, just to see that pathway down, I found an interview with the man who was the Camden Evening Police Dispatcher and he was telling about from the time the call came in till them coming down to the crash site and it's just so sad. Patsy Cline was really a voice of a generation. Patsy Cline was a girl with a dream who started out as a little waitress and eventually worked her way up to having one of the greatest songs of all time. It's actually the number one song on jukeboxes around the world, crazy. And that was a song that Willie Nelson wrote. Wasn't having much luck with him recording it. Played it for Patsy's husband and he said, you know what, Patsy's gotta do this song. They went to the house, woke Patsy up, played her the song and that became her featured song. Of course, she's known for so much more, but she was a really fascinating lady because she had an amazing sense of style. What she wore on stage was really captivating, and a lot of that was her and her mother's design. They didn't have the money to go out and hire famous designers, so they would design it themselves, and her mother would uh, make the designs, and then eventually, when Patsy did have the money, she would still design a lot of the wardrobe herself and send it off to Nudie Cohn to have him make or have others make um, specifically to what her designs are. But she was one of these women who she didn't have it easy. She was a brass lady. She called every guy hoss and she cussed and she, when she sang, she sang sweet, but she also would get down and growl and she'd get gritty. And I think just everybody could relate to her. There was just, you could see all of her emotion, all of her personality in her songs. And one night on the flight that 
should not have been her last flight. Right back here, uh, passing over in really bad weather conditions, the four seat Comanche that they were in, the little airplane, hit the top of one of the trees here, knocked the top of the tree off and knocked the engine out of the plane straight into the ground and sent the plane careening down into kind of a valley, which is actually what's behind me. Now we'll walk over and take the full trail back, but uh, I'll tell you kind of the abbreviated version of what I heard that dispatcher tell or him recounting his story. Here we have a sign that says, on one of country's darkest days, on March 5th, 1963, at 30 years of age, country singer Virginia Patterson Hensley, better known as Patsy Cline, along with their manager, Randy Hughes, and fellow Grand Old Opry stars, Hawkshaw Hawkins, Cowboy Copas, were killed in a plane crash in Camden, Tennessee on their way home from a benefit concert in Kansas City, Missouri. Known for her smooth sounding emotive voice, Klein helped break down the gender barrier and the musical genre. Considered one of country music's greatest vocalists, Klein was posthumously inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1973. So there's a man named Jerry Pfeiffer and this was he was the dispatcher. He said this was actually his first job ever, and it was one of his first shifts ever. First call he ever went on. Said that he received a call at 7.30 in the evening from the man who owned this big farm out here, this big land property, saying that he had heard a sputtering engine, had then heard it conk out and heard a crash, but didn't know exactly where. And the property was so big, that uh, and like I said the weather conditions it was foggy it was lightning it was raining off and on kind of misty when it wasn't raining and uh, so Jerry let the um, wow just so weird to be here we'll go check out what that is it's some sort of music note it looks like it probably would normally play some historical video or something maybe Hmm, not sure. It's got music, yeah, probably told a little of her story here. So, Jerry said he called out the highway patrol and first off asked them if they had any, or if they knew of any missing planes in the area. And they said at the time they didn't have one themselves but they would look into it and eventually the FAA confirmed that there was a missing plane with Patsy Klein and the other members on on board. So immediately word got out. Um, Jerry said he started getting calls from all over the country, wire services wanting to know what they knew. And of course, this now made this a real priority to find out. So he said that the police station closed at 2 a.m and they had went out driving all night and hadn't found anything. Looking all over the area where it had purportedly been heard to have crashed, couldn't find anything. I'll tell the story here because it says silence beyond this point. That's what that uh, sign is. So he said that, uh, he said they got a call from the farmer saying that he had walked around his property and he had found the crash site. So they came out here and he said that where this ravine was that basically the plane had hit the top of one of these trees. It had knocked off the top of the tree and the engine had went into the ground and then the plane had careened being thrown through all these trees down into where it finally would be basically at the end busted into pieces. And sadly, he said when they came out here with a search party at that time, uh, as he walked through here, he said he could find broken pieces of instruments, guitars, amplifiers, clothing strewn all over the place, but also in the trees. There was blood, there was motor oil, or I mean plane oil, there was pieces of the plane. The whole plane had been just completely demolished. 
And he said as he looked around looking for bodies, he couldn't find any and noticed that there were pieces of flesh everywhere and that in the fork of a tree there was Patsy's foot. He said he could tell it was hers because of the nail polish on it. They would eventually find her um, torso laying up against a tree, mostly intact, he said, with her long black hair and no survivors. He said that kind of in an odd turn of events, knowing that this was such a historical moment, Jerry said some of the members of the search party then started picking up mementos, like different pieces of the wreckage. He said three guys picked up the engine and um, he himself grabbed a few pieces and eventually opened a country store here called Pfeiffer's Country Store and he had everything that he had grabbed that day. Um, he brought it into the store and it was on display. So now let's go walk around. You know the story. So when you see these trees and you see just everything, you'll know this is where, this is where it ended for Patsy. And if you have your phone handy, why don't you play Crazy or I Fall to Pieces is your favorite Patsy song right now. This is definitely one of the sadder vlogs I've ever done. 
Now I was supposed to come out on this trip originally in March when the world shut down and I was supposed to stay in an Airbnb which was actually Patsy Cline's last home, what they called the Patsy Cline dream home. This was what she had worked hard for her whole life. She finally had the house of her dreams. She had furnished it the way she wanted, decorated it her way. And unfortunately they had to cancel it because of everything that was going on. And they had some personal health issues. So it's not gonna be available until after 2021 or the changeover from 2020 to 2021. But they did say that I could come out and show you guys the house. So we're gonna drive out towards pretty much Nashville. It's right outside of Nashville to Patsy Cline's final home. Sure glad I finally got to come out here and see this for myself. Let's go see where Patsy was flying home to. You know, forget being sad just because, you know, you're 30 years old, your band goes with you, you have a family. But then on top of all of it, they had just got done performing a benefit for someone. Help raise money. Just doesn't seem fair. Lots of rain today. Probably won't be able to see it, but that billboard over there is for Loretta Lynn's Ranch and Kitchen. Might be interesting to take a tour there sometime. I'm not really that familiar with her music, to be honest with you. All right, we've made it to Madison. That's our destination. So while we're in town, we're gonna go by where Patsy Klein had a pretty scary moment in 1961 where traveling down Old Hickory because Andrew Jackson lived not too far from here. Right here where we're at, Patsy was actually coming towards us in a car pulled out from this school just to the left. And she ended up spending a month in the hospital in 1961 and got a big gash across her forehead that left a scar. And I believe she broke her hip as well in this. Nice little community here. Where she lives. Well, here we are in Goodlettsville, a suburb of Madison. And this was the home that Patsy Cline purchased 10 months before she passed away. After all the hard work, she had attained her dream house. And we will come back once they open it back up to be stayed in. We'll come back and we'll do the whole Airbnb experience. It's, uh, it's furnished for the time period, but they do have a historical marker over here in the yard. And we're gonna go over here and see what it says. It's a really beautiful place, absolutely. They put all that old great blue in there. Let me zoom in a little bit. I don't want to completely ruin the experience because like I said, we will come back and vlog it all in the future and the inside and everything. So here you can see it says, this is the dream house of country music icon Patsy Cline, born Virginia Patterson Hensley in 1932. Roy Acuff offered her a job by the age of 16, but she opted to sing with a local group back home in Winchester. She changed her name in 1953 and debuted on the Grand Ole Opry in 1955. She got her big break in 1957 singing Walking After Midnight on Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. In 1973, she became the first female solo artist inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Can't wait to stay here. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. I wanna thank Michael Saban for becoming my newest Patreon, and Roger Pearsall, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. For all you Patsy Klein fans out there, I hope this was a treat for you. Even though it was a sad vlog, I hope that you got to feel the experience and got to feel like you were there. And we'll come back. Like I said, we'll stay here in the future. 
it'll be a fun experience. Have a great night, everyone, and goodbye. <laughs>